Welcome to the Kingdom Hairstylist Podcast. This is your host, Billy Jean. Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to Kingdom Hairstylist Podcast. This is your host. My name is Billie Jean. We are on episode 63, and I just want to say that I hope that you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I pray that even though, you know, you might not do what you traditionally do, um, get together with a lot of people, that you will still be grateful for, you know, just still being here and that, you know, God has blessed you and kept you and that you're healthy and that you're doing well. And, you know, just think of all of those things to be grateful for. Um, have you ever just stopped to think back over your life about how good God is to you? That's the space that I've been in for the last couple of days. Um, because I, I don't know, I guess sometimes I can be a little selfish and think about the things that I don't have, the things that I want, and then I'll get a little frustrated, but I just lately been trying to remember how good God is like the things that he's kept me from the things that he has brought me through and the things that he's showing me today like I'm just so grateful for how good God is because he's just so awesome I mean I love him so so much and he truly truly is our father and um I just wanted to mention that because I know some of you all may be struggling with the same things when we don't get everything that our heart desires or when we just feel like we should be in a different space or we should be further ahead than we are or whatever it is that you're struggling with. Um, just remember to think about how good he already is. I told God just yesterday, I said, you know, if you don't do another thing for me, like another thing, I would just be so grateful for the things that you already done for me. Like you've already done enough. Um, just thinking back, you know, like over my life, my son just turned 18, um, last Friday. And of course I was emotional because, um, just thinking back over all the things that we went through because I was a single mom for a long, long time. And that was like one of the hardest seasons of my life. And God brought us through, like I never, we never went without, you know, even when I didn't always have the right, enough money. Like we never went hungry. Um, he never missed a meal. He never, he never not had shoes or clothes or those types of things. So I'm just grateful. I mean, just thinking back how he had to have surgery when he was two months old. Um, he had a, a condition called pyloric stenosis where they had to go in and cut like this muscle so he could, could digest food. Um, it was the scariest thing I ever been through. I was only 20. No, I was 19. Matter of fact. But he wouldn't hold down food. Like every time I would give him a bottle, he would just spit up. And I, I didn't know what to do. I took him to the hospital and, you know, they didn't, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. And then they wanted to do an MRI on him. But he, he had to drink this liquid in order for them to see what was going on in his stomach. And he couldn't hold that down. So then we had to go to Children's Hospital. Um, you talk about just something so scary. Your newborn baby, you know, just... You give him a bottle and he just spits it all back out. Um, but we made it through that. And then when he turned two, he had to get surgery again um, for his hernia. Then at 14, that's when he got diagnosed with the type 1. So it's just been a rough road for us. But I look at him now and I'm just so proud of him because he's so strong and um, nothing affects him. And he just keeps going and he's working now. And last year of high school, and it, it's just it was just an emotional time. But... I have nobody but God to thank. I give him all of the glory and the honor for bringing us through that tough season. Um, and when I met my husband, you know, he was just so good with him. He was about eight um, when he met him. And it was, it just, it's like God knew exactly who I needed and what I needed um, to help raise my son. So God is just good. Like just, just whenever you get in a space of you just feel so frustrated about things that are not going well now you have to look back over your life because you you will find something to be grateful for you will find something and say well that's the same God that brought me through that so I know he'll bring me through this new thing that I'm going through so let's hop right into today's topic I titled today's message God knows best 
And I thought it was important because of all the things that I just shared to you, but not only that, um, just to give you a sense of hope and a sense of encouragement that um, you may want some things, you may want things to go a certain way, you may be believing in God for, you know, a change, like a change in your marriage, a change in your employment, a change in your environment, um, a change in your family. It could be a lot of different things that you're believing in God for, but you know, God definitely knows best and we have to trust that he knows exactly what we need. Um, so God does, he knows our hearts and he knows what we desire before we even ask for it. Um, a lot of times God gives us these dreams and, um, we can't shake it. Like it'd be things that, you know, you just want to do and you just don't know how to shake it. Um, but in those moments, you just have to continue to pray and ask God, like, um, these are the desires of my heart, God, and I don't know how to get to it. I don't know what, where to start, but I know you know best. So I need you to help me and guide me. And you have to come to him first. A lot of times we want to do a lot of research. We want to go to all these different people um, before we even sit before God and just ask him, like, is this a dream you gave me or is this something I gave myself? And if it's something that I'm supposed to do, Lord, help me get there. Help me be there. Help me, you know, just order my steps so that I can do it the right way. So I can do it the way that you want me to do it. Um, but just, you know, even if it's something that seems so far out of your reach, you know, you can still ask for it anyway. Um, but just make sure that like whatever you're asking God for, that it doesn't take his place. Um, because a lot of times, you know, we'll ask for all these things and then God will give it to us and then we'll idolize it and we'll let it take God's place. And that's not what we want to do. He still always wants to be first in our lives. And, you know, from reading the word a lot lately, I've been noticing that God really is a jealous God. I used to hear my grandmother say that when I was younger and I really didn't understand it. Um, but now that I'm older, now that I read the word for myself. I see that he really just does not like to be put last. You know what I mean? He's first and he wants to be first in our lives. And he doesn't want us to idolize things. He doesn't want us to create idols in our lives. And an idol could be several, several different things. Like it could be your car. It could be your job. It could be your salon. It could be your husband. It could be your children. It could be um, your house. It could just be so many different things. And um, just to give you an example, like some, you know, just take women, like some women want to be married. They desire to be married. Um, and even some men, they desire to be married. Um, but your spouse should definitely not take the place of God. I um, told myself when I got married that, you know, I would definitely keep things in order that God would be first. My husband would be second and then my kids would be last and then. Well, not last, but next. And then my business would be after my kids. And so I've been doing that. I've been keeping that order. Um, that's the order that God wants everything to be in. And um, so I always make sure that I give God the honor, you know, over my husband. And I don't post my husband more than I post God. Like, it's just the order of respect. But my husband knows that I love him dearly. And God is the one who gave me my husband. So it's nothing wrong with loving your husband, loving your spouse, um, loving your wife, but definitely keep God first because God keeps everything in order. He keeps everything in line. If you love God the way that you're supposed to love him, then he'll, you know, work in your marriage. He'll, he'll align everything the way that it's supposed to be, but he just wants to be first. Um, so just praise God more than you praise your husband. You're supposed to praise your husband too, but make sure God is first. Um, what ends up happening when we do it in the opposite order is that a lot of problems will arise in the marriage. Um, and then you just gonna have to turn back to God anyway. So you might as well keep God first at all times. Um, God wants to give you your heart's desires. I always keep reminding myself that too, even, you know, even before saying that, you know, he knows what's best for us. He definitely wants to still give you great things because he's your father. Just like if you ask your earthly father for things, he wants to give it to you, you know, especially if he has it to give to you. He definitely wants to give you things. Um, that's what he desires. A lot of us grew up spoiled. You know, if we had our earthly fathers in our lives, 
we got a lot of different things that we wanted. I know I did. Um, but today I basically wanted to focus on the story in Samuel because um, I don't know if many of you have read First Samuel, but I always read First Samuel. Um, God told me to read First Samuel a, a few months ago, but I kind of be going back to it because sometimes I feel like I missed something that he was trying to show me in that. So, but each time I read it, I get something new. Um, I know one of the reasons God told me to read it was, you know, to read about Hannah. Um, but then like lately I've been reading about Samuel and, you know, just his life and him being a prophet and the things that he went through. And, um, it's just very, very interesting to me because, um, it kind of reminds me of like what's going on in today's world where, like everybody was begging Samuel. They wanted him, they wanted him to ask God to give them a king. Um, for some reason they felt like they needed a king. Um, but God was very upset with them because he was their king. Like he was the God that got them out of Egypt. You know, he took them up out of Egypt from being slaves and he wanted to show them something. He wanted to give them what was best for them. You know what I mean? He wanted to give them something great, something greater. They had already been through enough. So he was trying to give them something good, you know, and they didn't want it. Like they rejected it. They wanted what they wanted. And that's crazy to me because that's how we all are sometimes. Like we just want what we want and we don't even really ever stop to think about like, what does God want for us? And then when we do think about what God wants for us, we still have these strong desires for other things, not knowing how destructive they may be for us later or how it'll make us feel later on in life. You know, once we actually get it, because a lot of things that we want are temporary. They're not always going to be um, the end all of, uh, or what God wanted for us to have. So, you know, they begged him, you know, they wanted a king. They, you know, they was like, look, we just really want a king like the other nations. But God had other plans for them. Like, you know, in the in the uh, beginning, he really wanted to give them and put them in a land flowing with milk and honey. When I think about that, I just think it's so beautiful. Like, could you imagine being in a land flowing with milk and honey? Like, to me, that just sounds so pretty and peaceful and just awesome. Like, no worries. Um nah but they, that's not what they wanted they wanted meat they wanted what they already were was getting from the Egyptians they didn't want to know what was new they didn't want God to give them his best so God did what he does um he gave them what they asked for he granted it um but it was it ended up being a, a very horrible mistake um he put Saul um, he anointed Saul as king. He had Samuel anoint Saul as king. And Saul was very handsome as they described him in the word. He was very handsome and he was very tall. He was taller than anybody else um, in those particular regions. And, you know, his father was rich. He came from a lot of money, um, but his heart was not after God's. Like he just, he was pretty selfish and he did a lot of things his own way. And the um, Israelites suffered from that. You know, they wanted this king so bad and God gave it to him. So that's why I stated earlier that it kind of reminds me of what's happening today. Like everybody that voted for, you know, Donald Trump was all begging. Oh, I want to be, we want him because he's going to know about money and business and all of these different things. And and then he got in there and he showed them, you know, that, that he doesn't have a heart after God. Um but I'm not here to talk bad about Donald Trump. Um, I'm not here to talk bad about anything. I'm just saying that it kind of reminded me of that because, you know, a lot of times people think that they they know what they want. And then when they get it, they realize that it wasn't the best idea. Um, but not to say God can't change Donald Trump. He can change him. He could definitely transform anyone. I mean, if he could take Paul and um, you know, change him from being a murderer. He was killing all the Christians. If he can change him, you know, he can change anyone. So I'm still believing in, you know, Donald Trump to change and, you know, to be better. But yeah, I want to read a little bit of first Samuel just to give you guys, um, some background on what I was just speaking on.
So really quickly, it's 1 Samuel chapter 12, verses 8 through 13.